Okay, so I'm going to have a look at a few questions to do with uh, compounding and simple interest. This is already assuming that you, you've done quite a bit on compound and simple, and these are kind of the more difficult questions for the GCSE Cambridge Extended Paper. Okay, so question number one, um, something like this, where you have to find the compound percentage rate. Um, so here we go, here's a question. We've got Manuela who invests $640. At the end of the four years, um, Manuela has $721. And this time we've got to find the, the compound interest rate. Okay, so the best way to do this one is to actually set up some kind of equation. So I start with 640. I've got X, which I don't know. That's going to involve the interest rate. And it's going to be for four years. And I know at the end of that time I have $721. So once I've got it set up like this, I just need to rearrange this. Step number one, get rid of the times by 640. So I get this stage here. I can't um, fourth root just yet on the first line unless I fourth root 640 as well. So here we go. So I get x to the 4 equals this number here, 1.126. Okay, don't round it just yet. And then I uh, basically put that on my calculator there. You should have a button on your calculator. Um, find the fourth root. And put the whole number in, so use your answer key from the calculator, and you should end up with x being 1.03024. Dot dot dot. Um, now remember, because it's compound, it, it was increasing, so that one is just telling us it's increasing. So therefore, the actual percentage rate is three percent compound. Okay, another question, uh, very similar to the last one. This time we've got Hans, he has $550, again, X percent compound interest. After 10 years, he has $638.30, find the value of X. So exactly the same as before, there we go, there's my equation. 550 times X to the power 10, since so 10 years, equals to 638.30. Step number one, divide by 550, which gives me this line here. Step number two, this time I'm going to use the tenth root. So again, use the button on the calculator. This time we get x is 1.015. Remember that the one is telling us that it's increased. So therefore the actual percent is this thing here, as in 0 0.015, which is the same as 1.5%. And there we go, three marks for that question. Uh, the second kind of question you can get is where you actually have to find the initial amount. So this time we don't know what they started with, but they invested at a percentage rate of 3.8% uh, compound interest. After 30 years we know what the investment is worth, and this time we need to find the initial amount. So this time, this is my calculation, this is the P, which I don't know. This is my 3.8%. I'd recommend writing it like this, we've got 100% plus 3.8 percent, so we've got 103.8 percent, and then that's for 30 years, and then the new amount is 1469. Okay, so this time, uh, it's actually a bit easier, we just basically, this is all some number, so stick all this in your calculator, and then you're just going to basically do that, so 1469 divided by whatever this is, well, I said just stick it right on the calculator, and we get the answer of 480. Okay, one more uh, example of this one. So here we go, 5% per year compound interest. This time we know after two years, this is what the investment is worth. Exactly the same as before. X is my initial amount. 5%, I've written it like this time, I could write it 105 over 100. Uh, for two years is equal to this amount here. So same again, you're going to do 286.65 divided by 1.05 squared and we get 260. There we go, two marks. Okay, question, the third sort of question you might get is this one, where you actually find the number of years until something happens. Uh, let's do part A first. Um, it's worth just having a look at this one, because this time we're decreasing by 10%, but still it's a compound question. So decrease by 10% each year, um, and find the value of the scooter after three years. Very similar to the last one, but this time here, it's actually going down, so 0.90 or 90 over 100 
it's been decreased by 10%. So that would be my calculation for this one here. So when we're compounding, it can go down as well as up, but it will say decreasing if, uh, if that's what the question wants us to do. If it says compounding, the assumption is we increase. Um, here's another question though that where we actually have to work out the number of years until something happens. So Jay's monthly wage is 650. Each year it increases by 5%. How many years will it take to exceed $1,000? Okay, so basically set up uh, an inequality if you want to show your method on this. We're starting with $650. Uh, increase by 5%, 1.05 to the power n. I want this thing here to be greater than 1,000. Now, uh, there is a method to do this using logs, uh, but that's not on the syllabus, so you don't need to don't need to worry about this method. The, the simple method will simply be to stick numbers on your calculator and see what happens. Now, basically, if I stick in an eight here, I'm going to get uh, 960.35. If I stick a nine in here, I'm going to get 1,008. So there we go. The number of years that it will take Jay's monthly wage to exceed 1,000 will be nine years. If you want to make sure you get full method marks on this, write down this step here and actually write down the, the eight year answer and the nine year answer to show that you've actually done the, the method and not just guessed a number. Okay, so there we go.